just finished watching the last dance Jordan documentary or you know Jordan documentary about the Chicago Bulls but you know focuses a lot on Michael Jordan and um, episode 3 and 4 on Netflix and if you haven't watched it already I really recommend you do watch it especially if you're a sports fan again I'm no NBA fanatic I'm no NBA geek I don't know much about the sport itself but bloody hell what an illuminating look at you know somebody that kind of has surpassed you know sporting uh, you know achievements and kind of pierced through into you know the general consent the consciousness you know everyone recognizes michael jordan's name or his face or his likeness even if you're not a fan of nba so being able to be that powerful to have that much of an impact you have to give it a watch it just for just for the curiosity alone um similar to like an elvis presley documentary right you might not understand what he meant because you went around during the time that he was popping but just to find just to have some kind of context just put some context towards it it's quite um um it's recommended viewing you know to check that out too so i recommend you the same thing for this documentary so three and four focused a lot on um dennis rodman and the rivalry the bulls had with the detroit pistons and i thought the dennis rodman um episodes were maybe some of the best bits of tv and another reason another kind of not reason but another sort of um illustration of just how important it is to embrace the weirdos and the freaks of our society and give them a kind of give them a runway to express themselves as opposed to kind of putting a you know um, a, a chain around their neck and pulling them back i think you need to be able to give them the room to just do what they do and then kind of guide them along the way but kind of pulling them back kind of shackling them down and trying to change who they are you're not going to bring the best out of them and I didn't know much about Dennis Rodman's off well I knew some bits about Dennis Rodman's off field activities but I didn't know he went that hard in the paint when he went to going out like there's one story they talk about where he's you know I think at the time Scotty Pippen was either on strike because he was injured or he was injured but he refused to play anywhere regardless until you know um the, the balls kind of um, traded him that wasn't going to happen for a while so then uh, he decided to come back and just start playing again and um, I think at the time Pippin, Rodman and Jordan were the kind of free horsemen so when Pippin was out Rodman kind of stepped in and sort of like took that kind of a uh, semi-leadership position and sort of was able to be the person that Jordan could rely on and then Pippin came back again um, P- Rodman felt like the third wheel and then went to like let's let his hair down and also he also wasn't really up for maintaining that good boy attitude and i think jordan mentioned a few times that um robin was basically killing himself trying to keep on a straight and narrow the whole time which he did right which i think says a lot about him that he's he was able to kind of put his own knees and wants to one side for the better of the team he was like, okay cool this is not what i want to do i could be having much more fun you know in a, in, a, in a club somewhere surrounded by hookers and blow and drinks and shit but i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna do the good do, do the best job as I can until my other teammate comes back and I can let my hair down and he proceeds to do that he decides he asks the management to take 40 hours he, he wants a holiday first right he wants a vacation he doesn't get the vacation time he wants so they tell him can you accept 48 hours and he takes that and I think it ends up being three days or something but it was just the willingness for the team Phil Jackson Michael Jordan has been you know, one of the leaders of the team or the leader of the team to be able to like give to understand who he was as a character and also give him the opportunity but also i think it says a lot about dennis robin because you don't usually get given those opportunities unless your teammates your colleagues know that when it's game time you show up if they're not if they're worried about that they're never going to give you the opportunity so i think it says a lot about his character too that he was somehow able to do both and i think most weirdos most freaks most outliers can do both but i think within the corporate world within rigid inf- rigid within rigid yeah rigid corporations within kind of uh, rigid startups within um, very conservative maybe sports franchises or whatever institution they may be i think sometimes they get worried that the kind of you know the 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 sort of eccentric characters will sometimes influence the people that will behave to stray of course and they also don't want to encourage that kind of behavior point blank on it but I, what i do like about america as well especially american sports maybe all sports are like this but because that's why i like sports in general is that 
if you're talented and you deliver on the field they usually give you more leeway when it comes to things that don't concern game day right so if you're shared training usually and you don't turn up on time some, uh, not turn up on time but let's just say you don't play well in training because turn up on time i think is a kind of fundamental baseline you have to meet but let's say you just don't perform well in training but when it comes to the match that you always perform most teams would be perfectly okay with letting you you know do what you want to do on the weekends do what you want to do after the match is finished do what you want to do sometimes even straight after the match is finished right they don't give a fucking fuck as long as they know that you're going to perform on the game day but i think sometimes in corporations they don't do that they want everyone to be so well behaved in every single asset that when it comes to you know let's imagine you go you have some sort of time to go let your hair down and you get a little bit loose they get really worried that your behavior is going to influence others and then they kind of go tell that and then you end up being bitter you end up being a little bit resentful of what has happened you end up not being a good employee that ends up kind of reverberating over everybody else and then suddenly you've got a bad working culture but if a corporation are able to incorporate a little bit of that and kind of sprinkle in some fanatical characters in their group it would let everybody know where the levels are at because if you realize in the documentary when he comes back from his like three day binge or, or five day um bender sorry um phil jackson purposely tries to put him through a really hard workout thinking that he wouldn't step up and he wouldn't be able to hack it and he smashes it of course isn't it right and then he realizes okay cool we're dealing with a freak of an animal we need to be able to kind of give this guy leeway to kind of do his thing on the outside because when it comes to training even not even game day and just come to practice and getting back into match fitness he was right back where he started from like he didn't miss a beat so i think that was really impressive even just seeing him coming down to the basketball court wearing his pajamas and his slippers and shit was super funny but i thought that was really cool i liked the relationship between each other i thought that was really sweet um and you know you got a feeling you you definitely understood watching it why some some athletes miss sports professional sports and that kind of locker room com camaraderie so much camaraderie or whatever that word is called because you don't get that same sort of understanding on the outside world no way no one gives a shit about you the same way your teammates do no one understands you the same way your teammates do you don't bust your shovels balls the same way your teammates do so you step out into the real world stuff becomes a bit weird and, it, and really corporate and really well to do and well behaved and proper and shit but in this sort of arena when you're fighting for a common goal i think that or for a common goal especially the nba championships it sort of works itself out that way but i thought his um introduction to the series was really cool obviously the you know uh, introduction of common Electra kind of spiked some of the ratings got some interesting stories from her about her, their time together and just generally his kind of eccentric self was just really amplified and you got to see why he's such an icon such a legend um somebody was able to kind of you know be an integral part of the team um, whilst also maintaining his own personality and not kind of bending to you know the expectation of what a professional athlete should look like or act like so yeah definitely appreciate that one and then let's move on the next one i thought was interesting part of it was how good of a sport michael jordan was right you don't necessarily hear this about him you hear you hear rumors or rumblings from nba fans who say that michael jordan was a bit of a dick and of course most of it comes from you know if you're an nba fan during that era and he was spanking your team around you're gonna have good words to say about him right but i never knew he was that much of a you know f uh but you're a stickler for like you know uh the right kind of conduct on the on the court when it came to you know if he lost or if he won he definitely shook hands just being professional so you would go to the end with him on the court right you'd elbow each other you'd make each other bleed you'd break each other's noses and shit someone might roll their ankle but when it came to the end and the game was over you'd all shake each other's hand maybe you get you you know you grab a close of wine with somebody share a cigar whatever it may be but there would be the understanding that you know this is what professionals do they go to war on the court but then when it's off the court it's done it's over it's squashed so it was really interesting to see how annoyed jordan got by the whole thing with the detroit pistons and you have to understand especially looking at it for just from the video clips you know they always say that that, that era the 80s and 90s was a completely different game especially even the early 2000s the physicality of basketball was just insane seeing these big burly dudes right running into each other and sometimes you know nowadays especially with how they call fouls and the clips i've seen if you just leave a bit of your arm out and someone runs into it and flops you know you're going to get penalized but back in the day they would be strung up in each other their arms and their 
you know, their shoulders, their biceps, their elbows, their palms and their hands will be, you know, smashing into someone's face. It was really aggressive and um, it was cool to see that even though from what it looked like, you know, they, they treated Jordan like, you know, Antonio Reyes when he first played for Arsenal against United and Gary Neville and Co just kicked lumps out of him. That's what it reminded me of when I saw Jordan against Detroit Pistons. They were very aware that, you know, we're not going to match him up in skill. But as soon as this guy drives towards the, the basket, we're going to do everything we can to stop him jumping. And bloody hell, it definitely worked. But after getting pummeled a few times, beating in a conference, uh, well, beating in a conference, yeah, beating in a conference, beating in a championship, he always made sure to shake their hand. So I guess when it came to the point where the Chicago Bulls finally got one over the Detroit Pistons, you can understand why he was held so much of a grudge about the whole thing but looking at it you're like fucking hell mate this was how many years ago and you're still pissed off about it now when they tried to explain to him what Isaiah Thomas had to say about the whole situation he just didn't want to hear it um, but again it just comes down to his kind of base level of respect is just that you know once the game is over you have to shake my hand no matter what win lose or draw just shake each other's hands it's over it's done with and i think that does speak volumes about the dude man say what you like about him but he's a pretty good pro in that respect so i was really surprised to see that that was such a big issue for him um going forward but some of the aggression look even where the hands are look at his face he's just getting pummeled on the right it's just insane to see how much he had to go through um, in order to become, you know, the legend that he is now, he really went for the ring, which maybe explains why a lot of basketball fans are so hesitant to say LeBron James is better because Jordan had to really go and come through with fire. Like if you see this picture on the right, look, look, look at that. Look at all the amount of players are all over him. You've got one underneath, one on top. You've got a hand here. You've got someone here ready to get the rebounds or anything that drops down. Absolutely insane. And then the last point I wanted to make on this was that, um, of course, I think DJ Pistons were the stoke of NBA. Um, and I, I can I definitely understand why every team hated playing against them because, you know, they didn't necessarily play attractive brand of basketball. Um, anytime one of your players has to wear these plastic sort of like... Um, what do you call them? These sort of like face masks, protective things is usually a bad sign. It usually means you've got some bruises in your team. That means he must have broke his nose a couple of times and it's repairing or his cheekbone must have cracked. Something happened, his cheekbone fracture. That's not a good sign. Some of your teammates are wearing these sort of things in their faces. It means you guys have got a whole team full of bruises. So I can definitely understand why basketball teams hated them and it's weird though isn't it because usually basketball you get the idea that you know there's all this dribbling and fucking flying through the air and shit but there seems to be an acceptance in basketball more so than maybe football that you can win this ugly and it'd be okay like they all praise quite highly they were gloating about winning the championship you know rightfully so and people remember them as a great team but when you do that in football and soccer for the most part you know the opposite opposing team gives you those a stick the players seem quite embarrassed by it all like you don't see a lot of the Greek players that won the Euros parading around, you know, gallivants and their trophies around there. It's you're sort of feeling embarrassed by it. You obviously got it in history books, but it's not something that you gloat about, right? It's no like, you know, it's no fucking United v fucking, you know, Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. Um which is interesting that that kind of gets promoted but again I, I, I thought that approach was really good as well I think there's understanding more so than basketball than maybe football that what the players that you have available you mould your team your style of play around the players you have as opposed to players you don't have if you've got a bunch of bruises on your team that are formerly known as the bad boys you just kind of embrace it and make sure that you can play that way maybe you have a couple people on the team that can score but for the most part everyone's kind of you know arms elbows and knees look at that guys are throwing punches during the game and it's a white guy as well not even the crazy black dude you know what i mean that's insane to see but i thought that was cool and then lastly Isaiah Thomas's horrendous excuse as to why because I think this clip is on no, I'm not going to show the clip because I'll probably get demonetized but this image here shows I think um, the other Isaiah Thomas getting a lot of stick online because of what's happening but I thought his excuse I think it's interesting isn't it? he didn't want to really he didn't acknowledge why he got that stick he got right which reminds me a lot of like you know um, i'd imagine if luis suarez got an interview now and they asked him about the stick he received after the whole Patrice Evra negro thing he would also not have any understanding why i don't know why it's just athletes they have this blind spot 
when it comes to their own actions and the consequences of it they don't see or they seem to have a different recollection i remember someone saying it about editing film editing that once you start editing videos on youtube and shit or just editing any sort of you know video footage you your memory tends to get a bit fucked up because you start to remember shit the way you edit like you remember in bits and you put it together but it's not necessarily had the chronological had that's not necessarily a chronological reflection of what actually happened and maybe it's if it happens athletes because you're just so in it and you're in a seat i don't know but there's just a reason i don't know what the reason is but the reason why some most athletes regardless of where what kind of sport they're in they always seem to have a blind spot when it comes to their own action they don't seem to recognize or to understand why other people can interpret their actions differently or they don't seem to have any sort of like, it doesn't have any valid, validity to them at all they're just like no nah, i don't get it it's not true it didn't happen is that okay fair enough but I thought that was very really telling and the fact that you know Michael Jordan still hates his guts to this day was really good um I'm one f- I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of holding grudges I have to be honest um and that's not a popular thing to say but I think holding grudges is normal and I think more people do it than not but they just don't admit they do I think part of the reason why a lot of people are successful and do the things they're doing now primarily because of a grudge or because of some sort of resentment they have towards somebody they want to prove wrong I know for most of my career has been that has been trying to prove people wrong, have been trying to stick stick it up someone's face that said no or that let me go or whatever it may be. I just be like, no, alright, cool, I'm gonna prove you wrong. And usually it always happens, and I'm usually very aware of like kind of reminding that person, hey, by the way, do you remember how you said something X Y Z? Look at me now. You know what I mean, um, and I don't think that's a bad thing, especially if you don't let it, you know, take over you and consume you. As long as you just use this motivation and fuel, what's wrong with that? Um, and I think Jordan, it worked well for Jordan as well going forward, didn't it? Really, because imagine you're the game before the championship final, and you do that against your Pistons, and you get one of your, you know, long or you know someone that you kind of really hated for a while, and you end up kind of you know crushing that team and pissing off on their star men so much so that they kind of cower out of the stadium without shaking anyone's hand. And again, it's weird that even to his day, he, still he thinks it was some kind of like, you know, bold look of like, fair enough, you beat us, we can duck in. They still look, even in the video, when you watch it, like they kind of duck in on their people's arms and being a bit coy about it. I think if you're going to not shake someone's hand and be a dick, you've got to do it with your chest up, innit? You can't just be like cowering under people's arms and just trying to hide and being all shy about it. Like, you know, have your chest up, like, you know, what? What? But, yeah. That documentary is flipping incredible. I really reckon you check it out, man. Last Dance on Netflix now is bloody great.